welcome to UT Nighttime and tonight's guest, Ed Lingen. And now, where we've been steroid free since 2003, your host, Mason Lowry. Thank you for that very polite applause. Thank you. It is show number two here at UT Nighttime. Show number two, they always say that the second show is the most difficult. You've gotten the first one out of your system. The second one's supposed to be not as good. And I've seen tonight's show, and that is definitely true. <laughs> not as good as last week. Jim, you've seen the show. I don't know. I don't know, man. What do you think? I don't know. I think uh, we've got some potential, but it's on your shoulders not to screw it up. So I really needed that. Thank you, I know. James. Thank you. Well, how about Alex Rodriguez, huh? A-Rod's been in the news. You all saw the, uh, you all saw the ESPN interview with A-Rod. A-Rod explained himself as being young and stupid at the time of his steroid use, and he has proved to himself and his fans that he doesn't need any of that. Apparently, A-Rod and his fans have not watched him during October because he's not good in the playoffs. Even though, he, even though he used while he was with the Rangers, a lot of Yankees fans feel that this is just another attempt to attack their beloved ball club. Yeah, this is the attack, not the fact that the highest paid ball club in baseball has not won the World Series for almost a decade. It's not a joke. We just wanted to piss off all the Yankee fans we possibly could and make them not watch our show anymore. So, I'm for that. So, You're, you're, you're a Red Sox fan, I right, Jim? I, got the, I, I am right here. Got the hat. I should be wearing it for all these you Yankee should. jokes. but You really should. I should. I've got this on. And Major League Baseball Commissioner Bud Selig has said that A-Rod and the other dopers in baseball have shamed the game. And he didn't say this when Barry Bonds, Jose Canseco, or the Mitchell Report came out. Not even when Roseanne sang the national anthem. <laughs> it was A-Rod that made him say that. Also in sports this week, Brett Favre announced that he will be retiring again. And as we all know, Brett Favre holds almost every passing record in the National Football League and now holds the record for most times retired. He did it last year, too. And regarding his retirement... <laughs> Favre stated that it's time to leave, but he closed his press conference by saying, I'll see you in Kansas City in August. And boom goes the dynamite. <laughs> in other news, porn star Stormy Daniels is being persuaded by fans to run for the Louisiana Senate seat in 2010 that's occupied by David Vitter. Yeah, Daniels' website says that she will work tirelessly and will work to change the status quo. And I wonder what that status quo would be, but I'm guessing that it's the ratio of people that are porn stars in the Senate. And some people, some people are calling this a mere publicity stunt because Vitter was a client of a D.C. madam. Yeah, this will be the first time that one of the candidates screws people for a living and the other is an adult film star. That's one. Thank you. <laughs> and speaking of porn, in Boardman, Ohio, a man has been sentenced for viewing pornography and masturbating while he was supposed to be installing a satellite dish box at a customer's home. Well, you know what he was doing, don't you? He was just making sure that all of the channels were working properly. No? Yeah. You'll like this one. Two frozen mice in a laboratory in New Jersey that can contain an organism that causes the plague have been reported missing. Yeah, that's bad. Scientists are saying this is the most disturbing thing to come out of New Jersey since the Jonas Brothers. <laughs> that one was good. Thank you. Thank you for that polite laughter and applause. Verizon and Altel have completed their merger finally. This means the new commercials will feature Chad and the Can You Hear Me Now guy bickering as a married couple. No? All right, fair enough. In Toledo, in Toledo earlier this week, an injured deer made its way to the service entrance of a veterinary hospital. Yeah, but the doctors wouldn't perform the surgery because the deer's HMO would not cover the procedures. <laughs> and a teacher was arrested in Bellefontaine, Ohio, for prostitution after using a school computer to arrange a sexual encounter later that afternoon. You know the economy is bad when teachers won't even sleep with their students for free. That's how bad this economy has become. And how about... <laughs> I told you, second show, not as good. How about the Grammys? Huh? Coldplay? You all saw the Grammys. Please say you did. If you didn't, just, just pretend. Thank you. Yeah, music! Coldplay won Best Album, beating out Kings of Leon and Metallica. And after the ceremony, Metallica responded by asking, what happened? You couldn't get Jethro Tull to screw us this year? <laughs> Thanks. The big winners at the Grammys this year were, of course, Robert Plant and Alison Krauss winning five awards. 
Bruce Springsteen won for Best Rock Song, and Amy Winehouse won for Best Performance While Smoking Rock. <laughs> and Chris Brown was arrested in just a terrible story overshadowing the Grammys. His girlfriend, Rihanna, claimed that he attacked her and left bite marks all over her body. Yeah, apparently Brown went to the Marv Albert School of Fighting. There's a joke there if you look. Wikipedia that as well. All right, we're going to be right back with some viewer mail right after this, so don't go away. And we're back. Thank you for that very polite applause. Great show tonight. Uh, we had originally booked uh, Joaquin Phoenix on the show, but he was called back to his home planet and wouldn't be able to make it tonight. Thank you. And uh, we've got an equally fantastic guest, the director of Bat Boy the Musical from last year and the upcoming Crumbs from the Table of Joy. Great guy, Ed Lingen, is on the program tonight. Give it up for Ed. He'll be here. He'll be here shortly. I you know we had unprecedented success last week. We had over 250 YouTube views. We've decided we're going to decorate the set a little bit. The show still, uh, still needs to be tweaked a little bit. We're still very poor. We don't get much money. I've added this coffee mug. It says Whitey's Diner, one of my favorite haunts from back home. We're still very poor. I'm wearing the same jacket I was last week. I made it myself out of old Firestone tires. You know. We couldn't but, afford uh, to give you coffee, could we? I don't think no, there's anything in there's, here. There's nothing in here. Yeah. And with that, one of these overwhelming, days. with that overwhelming popularity... We've actually received some viewer mail after last, week, last week's show, if you can believe that, asking about Valentine's Day advice. And we're going to answer those letters now in a segment that we'd like to call Ask Mason. <laughs> James, our first question, if you please. Yes. Um, our first question tonight, this one's coming from uh, James in the Crossings. And uh, uh, James asks, Mason, I'm broke, but I did promise my girlfriend, you know, pretty nice dinner. Uh, should I swallow my pride and just tell her about my financial situation or do I want to just go to Taco Bell and get a candlelight dinner back at her apartment? Thank you for writing, James. Now listen, you should just swallow your pride and tell your girlfriend what's going on. God knows in these hard economic times that we need to scrimp and save. See, no water in here. She'll understand. And then afterwards, take her to White Castle because White Castle is offering candlelight dinners. So this way you can have a little romance before spending the night in and out of the bathroom. Mostly in the bathroom. <laughs> Jim, what else have you got? All right, uh, Angela, all the way from Arkansas. We've got Arkansas? viewers in Arkansas. Really? Yes, uh, she writes, Mason, I'm tired of the crappy Valentine's Day commercials, uh, you know, for all the jewelry stores this time of year. How about you? Well, Angela, I don't mind them too much. Actually, our very own Jimmy Mominy starred in a Jared's commercial, but sadly, they didn't use the spot. Do you remember that, Jim? Uh, yeah. Jim, we've already got yeah. the tape. That was just useless oh. exposition. We're going to play okay. it whether you remember it or not. All right. All right. Rick, do we have the tape? We do. All right. Can we roll that? All right. Let's see it. Take a look. This is Jimmy's Jared's commercial. Honey, we gotta get out of here. Come on. What? Uh, because I'll tell you in the car. What'd you do? Please, I'll explain it in the car. We gotta, we gotta. I'm not going anywhere till you tell me where you went. You went to Jared. Yeah, I did. Now, come on, get your. Shit. We gotta get out of here. Yeah. <sighs> Jim, that was very strange. Yeah, it was. It was very low budget, that, as you can yeah, tell. Um, I, that's I probably why tell. it didn't air ever. So. You're probably right. I don't Thanks know. Thanks for digging that out of my archives. Yeah. Who is our next question yes, from, Jim? Let's, let's move to that. Let's um, move on. It's uh, Roger from Nantucket. Yeah, and, it's uh, the man from Nantucket. That's right. Um, no, Roger no jokes asked, about that here. Nothing wrong with him at all. <laughs> um, I want to kick it up a little bit for my sweetie on Saturday. Any last minute gift ideas? Actually, Jim. We do, we found a few gifts, and this goes out to everyone out there still trying to scrounge for last minute gift ideas. We actually found some of these, all real, we wouldn't make any of this up, I promise. One item that is not selling so great, and I don't know why, I don't know why it's still on store shelves, but they've been trying to sell this for about 20 years now. This might work for you, it's the Lorena Bobbitt knife set. 
For those of you too young to understand the joke, Wikipedia, you, you'll find it much funnier in about six hours, I promise. This item actually, this next item here, selling a lot with the ladies. So if you have any friends that are trying to tell their man that their relationship is going nowhere, have them pick up the Christian Bale Breakup Bear. That's right, the Christian Bale Breakup Bear. Just squeeze it and it says... You're a nice guy. You're a nice guy. But I don't cut it when you bullshit around like this. Seriously, man, you and me, we're done. I hope I don't receive one of those. This one... This one is for the person that gets cold sweat. You know, they're, they're cold, but they still sweat profusely. It's gross. That's right, it's the Sham Wow Snuggie. That's truly disgusting. That guy looks like the worst guy in the world. Underneath the Snuggie, not good. And finally, these three gifts come either separate or in a set. And you know, everybody, with all of the hoopla and hullabaloo sur surrounding uh, new President Barack Obama, many items have been created in his likeness, even without his endorsement. But these products have his endorsement. Here it is. It's the Barack Obama Valentine's Day Trifecta. Yeah, this is a hot seller, too. In this set, you get the Yes We Can Erectile Dysfunction Pill. There you go. Stimulate your package with this 40 count of little Democratic blue pills. You also receive the Yes We Are condom to protect your homeland from foreign invaders down south. It's a cheap joke, but we like it. And the Yes We Did pregnancy test because you just got screwed and you're hoping for a bailout. There you go. That's Valentine's Day gift ideas for everyone that has not made their purchases yet. We'll be right back with Ed Lingen, so stay tuned, everybody. And welcome back to UT Nighttime. My first and only guest tonight is a very talented writer, actor, and director. He is directing the upcoming University of Toledo production of Crumbs from the Table of Joy. Please welcome a uh, very funny, very talented man, Ed Lingen. Ed, welcome to the program. Thank you. Okay. Ed, great to see you. Tell Good us about tell, tell us about Crumbs from the Table of Joy. It's, I'm pretty familiar with a lot of plays. I've never heard of it. I know nothing about it. Yeah. So what, what's it about? Um, Crumbs, well, you don't know anything about it because it's not very old and hasn't been produced very often. Um, Crumbs from the Table of Joy is a, a, a ma it's an imaginary play, fictional play about an actual cult leader. Well, about a group of people following an actual cult leader, a fictional family following an actual cult leader okay. who was uh, prominent during the 40s and 50s named Father Divine. And uh, he was an African-American cult leader who uh, claimed to be God and um, said that segregation was a plan on the part of the wicked to prevent the kingdom of God from happening on earth. And so desegregation was the key to uh, uh, causing the kingdom of God to appear on earth. Uh -huh. okay. And so we see in the play this uh, uh, African-American family, the father of which is a widower, and he's trying to sort of control his daughters and become a straight-laced fellow by following Father Divine. And, and basically, a lot of complications arise because of that. Doesn't plan. sound doesn't sound like like a comedy. It sounds like a pretty heavy drama. Is that accurate? It, it has a lot of heavy moments to it, but it's it's it, there's a lot of comedy and particularly a lot of strangeness in the piece. It's a particularly odd play. Um, although there is yeah there is a lot of serious drama. Some people would compare it to uh, a Tennessee Williams style play uh, where oh, somebody okay. steps in and out of the production over and over. But it's a lot quirkier than most Williams material. Okay. How big is the cast, how, and how, how difficult was it to cast the show? Well, it was, it was difficult to cast the show. Primarily, it's difficult when you cast a show in a university when you have characters who are clearly not the same age as the actors playing them. Right. So you had to deal with who do you think can uh, somehow convey something of the quality of somebody who is of different age than them. So you have characters who are too young, and then you have characters who are too old, and really nobody is quite the right age as far as the actors, but that's part of working in a university. Right. Uh, so it was hard, but I think we did a good job. I'm really happy with the cast. It's a five-person cast, four women, one man. Okay. How okay. difficult is it to get kids our age, the university age, to, to work in drama and comedy and the interplay between the two? How difficult is that? Well, I think that... It really doesn't have so much to do with working in a university. I think in general that 
there are very few actors who are really, really good at both comedy and drama. Like usually people are good at one or the other and they kind of have to struggle with the other genre that they're not great at. So I think that it's not really very different than say if I'm working in New York and casting people in New York because you tend to find a lot of people who are just really good at comedy or at drama. But my experience has been though, that if you're working with somebody who's really good at comedy, you can somehow just tweak them a little and all of a sudden they're doing drama without knowing it. I mean, that, that, that's, it's, it's, that's part mm -hmm. of directing, you know. So, very but, cool. but yeah, so. All right, very cool. We'll be back with more from Ed Lingen and more about Cronus from the Table of Joy right after this. Don't go away. I love the applause. I really, I really like that. That's very cool. We're back with more from Ed Lingen, the director of the upcoming UT production of Crumbs from the Table of Joy. It opens February 20th and runs through March 1st in the Performing Arts Theater at the Center for the Performing Arts. Ed, before the break, we were talking about this show. Why don't you tell us a little more about yourself, specifically how did you end up here at the University of Toledo? I understand you're from, you're from Texas, yes? Yeah, I grew up in Texas. I grew up in Houston, where I was born. Uh, uh, grew up there, started doing theater at about the age of one uh, at, on my own. And, um, you know, I was making up things. I, I, I kind of remember coming to consciousness and performing for my parents uh, at about the same time. And um, got my first role in fifth grade, played George Washington in the cool. uh, big role, my first big role, and then proceeded to continue to do theater. Went to undergrad, got my BFA in acting from uh, Southwest Texas State University, which okay. is now known as Texas State University. All right, it's yes. a stupid name. The old one was better, <laughs> and um, and then I guess I guess though it does describe what it is. It's still Texas. Yeah, State. yeah, it's true, and uh, and really it's not southwesternly located. Where is it? Located? But I like the first name better because of the inanity of it all. But, where, where is it? Uh, it's San Marcos, Texas, right between Austin and San Antonio. See, that means nothing to me. So, so well, it's, it's God's country. Okay. You know. <laughs> Fair enough. Um, and then I moved to New York City in 1992, and I started writing, acting, and directing, uh, producing, uh, managing theaters. Um, and uh, uh, for some reason, had my most success being a financial success, being a critic, being a, uh, a teacher, ended up getting my PhD at the City University of New York, the Graduate Center. And then my wife and I, who met in a play in New York City, had a child. Very nice. And uh, we decided it wasn't fair to make the child starve along with us. So I applied <laughs> for jobs and ended up moving to Toledo in 2007. When you moved to point. New York, what's, what were your aspirations? Did you have this delusion of grandeur of being this famous actor? Or did you have anything in particular you wanted to do when you got there? Well, or just be a success? I, I went there... Uh, uh, was, uh, I didn't really have delusions of grandeur. I thought I might be an actor, uh, and uh, but I also knew that I liked to write, and I think I went into it just expecting chaos, and I got more or less what I was looking for uh, when I when I went in. But I, I did know generally I was moving towards towards theater at that point. Very cool. You know, you ended up in Toledo last year, two years ago, was it? Yes, two thousand seven. Two thousand seven. What all have August. you done here since you got here? Um, well, as far as theater is concerned, um, uh, the first show I did was Bat Boy the Musical, which uh, was a really wonderful, successful uh, production, and, and, and it gelled really beautifully, and I got to meet a lot of, work with a lot of really wonderful people on that show, and it was hilarious. I mean, it was a, it was a funny directing process. The whole rehearsal process had a really kind of strangely funny energy to it, which is, you know, and every show is different because Crumbs is more dramatic and it's got a more right. dramatic energy to the rehearsal process. Um, so I did that, and then in, um, over the winter break, I directed Eric Idle's Pass the Butler at the Toledo Repertory oh, Theater. Eric Idle, uh, mm -hmm. Monty Python fame, yes. yes. Mm -hmm. And that went really well, and of course that was another really kind of weird, funny... Kind of uh, absurd, really... Yeah, it's like you expect. It was a bunch of rich people cheerfully waiting for the patriarch of the family to die on his life support machine so ah. that they could live comfortably. Of course. Yes, and so it was perfect. Sounds very Eric Idle. Yes, yes, you know, and uh, and then there's Crumbs from the Table of Joy, which will be the, the third piece that I do. And I also do dramaturgy uh, uh, research for directors for the uh, Glass City Theater Collective, which is a local professional theater right, company. Right. Mm -hmm. Well, Ed Ling and everybody, thank you so much for being on the show. Oh. Crumbs from the Table of Joy. Thank you.
opens February the 20th, runs through March 1st at the Center for the Performing Arts. So everybody make sure you get out and go see that. We'll, we will we'll be back here, or in English, we'll be back here next week. Our guest will be the new University of Toledo head football coach, Tim Beckman, will be on the program. So make sure you come on out for that. That is Jimmy Mominy. Jimmy, fantastic job tonight. Thank you. You speak so well. I, I know I'm not on a camera, but thank you for the plug there. And Two hopefully plugs. we'll be back with a much better third show. Show one was great. This show went just fine. Thanks so much to Ed. Third one's the charm, Mason. Third one's the charm, of course. We'll be back next week. We'll see you then.